all of a sudden we haven't created any hinge or load on the shaft and then as I begin to swing down, because we haven't created any angle, yeah. there's nothing to actually ensure that this low point can get forward and we deliver that nice lag and that release into the golf ball. All right, so what we're gonna look at here is uh, three reasons that players fat or duff the ball, hit the ground too far behind, and then the relative, let's say, simplistic fixes for those. Now, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution, mm -hmm. but within reason, these would be great points of reference that players can use to ensure that they're not doing one of the three reasons that they might be hitting the ground behind the ball. Yeah, so what we're saying is the low point of that person's golf swing is coming in too far behind the ball here. Mm. That can actually produce a variety of different types of shots. Correct. But um, for today, we're going to talk about the time when you're going through a pattern when that club is making contact with the ground too early. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, low point is essentially the bottom of the swing arc. Every golf club has a descending movement. Yeah. It would have a bottom and then rise again. And that's going to lead us into... I suppose fault and fix number one is the concept of where that low point should be. So Tony, mm -hmm. talk me through if I set up to this golf ball here yeah. and where the low point for a professional golfer or the very bottom of that swing arc, where should that low point be? The simple part for me measurement is left armpit. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where I see the bottom of the arc of the golf swing there. So when we see golfers on TV, right, we always see uh, ball first mm -hmm. and then the ground after. And that's because their low point is after, which is around the left armpit, right? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So the main reason that occurs as such is because the lead hand is higher on the grip than the right hand at this full point of extension. Yep. It lines up with that left armpit there, guys. You can see that where that lead armpit and mm. that golf club is going to get at its furthest point, yep. well, that would be the bottom of the swing. Yep. We see the average professional golfer has a low point, let's say approximately about four inches in front. Yep. So at the moment of impact, they get this beautiful position where there's shaft lean, compression, then the golf club goes in before it rises up. Really, in the first initial lesson that we have with a lot of players, one of the main discussions that we have is, what is your concept and idea of how the golf swing should work to produce a reasonable contact where you feel like you get some compression of the golf ball and the ball shoots off with some height. Mm. We see that a lot of players are under the perception that they should help the golf ball up in the air. So uh, fault number one that we're using in this series is essentially that they're trying to help the ball up in the air, correct? Yeah, yeah, and I, I completely agree with you. And that's the first thing that I'll always do with every lesson, right, is to, when I'm seeing people, especially people who don't have an understanding of how the golf club works, mm. I think our job is to teach people how to use the golf club, yeah. essentially, right? Yeah. And so how this golf club is built by people who put lots of time and effort into it, we need to teach them how to do it. So, you know, just explain the simple concept of how that ball just launches off that club face there, right? So it's not through creating an elevation. I think the majority of us would understand that by now, right? It's not through this, right? It's through a slight descending blow of yeah. that club there onto the ball hitting the middle of the ball and then taking off and then spin and loft getting the ball up in the air. Correct, yeah, so yeah. it squeezes off, right? So if a player uh, is relatively new to golf, this could be the number one reason that you are hitting behind the golf ball or fatting is essentially that you are under the idea or the assumption that you need to help the golf ball up. One of the most simple ways to essentially eradicate this out of your golf game is to have some rack rehearsal or some practice swings before you hit the golf ball. Simply getting a sensation and a feel of what it is like yeah. to get the bottom of the swing in front. That's mm. key. So don't get too obsessive about exactly where. Essentially try and get the first point of contact of that golf club striking after the golf ball. And you can see down on the ground there where that golf club is actually making a brushing is well in front of where that golf ball lay. Then once you've done that, what I want you to do is simply walk in. We're gonna shell one down here, Todd. Yeah, let's get, get it into up. our posture. I'm gonna get the feeling that I'm gonna recreate that feel in front. Yeah. That's nice. As a, as a result of doing so, you can see the ball was there. Certainly didn't duff that. Hey, for the people watching, it was a nice shot. <laughs> hey, i tell you one thing as well, right, in regards to that, is that I'm very big on feedback. So I use a lot of feedback in all my coaching and, and feedback that the student can have for themselves. If you're making swings and you can understand and see where the contact is into the ground, yeah. then you're ready to go, right? Yeah. If you are doing that successfully in your practice swing, right, and then 
you are not achieving that when you're making contact with the golf ball, then we've got to work out what's happening between there and the actual point of contact. And mm. some of the other stuff about to talk about can possibly help them with that yeah, as well, yeah, right? Yeah. No, kind that, of getting into it. That's a, that's a great addition. All right, yeah. let's move on to fault number two, which would be, for us, we were talking about this before, let's say shifting off the golf ball, mm. which then leads for players generally hanging back. Assuming yeah. they've got the concept that they need to get the low point forward, uh, we're going to use my head as a point of reference here, specifically yeah. my left ear, aren't we, Tobes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what I, what I like to say, well, the problem is if you shift too far this way for me here, right? So if too much mass gets shifted over there, and as you can see here, Carrod's right hip right is directly over that foot, making it difficult to jump off. Would you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I feel like the majority of my pressure is on the outstep of my trail side. Yeah. So so it, it doesn't feel athletic at all. I can feel like my right knee's kind of buckling. Yeah. I feel like I'm, if you were to give me a little nudge, I'd fall over. Yeah, so. great. And and without going into crazy specifics about what we see in pressures into the ground, I've got a simple checkpoint. So take your club to the top of the backswing for me. So what I want to see here, right, is that I use the head as a reference point all the time. So if you guys are, you get you get the opportunity to kind of use some form of analysis tool, like a skiller step or something like that, you can draw a line up through the golf ball. Mm. And a really good baseline for me is like left ear to, to temple mm. around this area here is a really good place to start. That would tell me that they haven't shifted too much mass there. And we could go into the science of, we know how much that player starts coming back. But if you use that as a reference point, yeah. I find that that is going to give the student a very good chance to move back towards the target. Yeah, and absolutely. We will make quick mention to there is a lot of players that have uh, slight variations of this. They might shift off it early, but then they recenter really well. Yeah. They play at a high level. They win PGA Tour events. There are players that actually stay slightly back and get the handle leaning forward enough. But as a general rule of thumb, guys, what you want to see in your mm. golf swing, if you were to chuck this on an analysis tool mm. from the setup position, draw a little circle around your head, make sure that uh, left ear at address within reason is over the top of the golf ball. And yeah. then at the top of the swing, let's keep it over the top into this position here. Yeah. And all things being equal, that will help that low point based on uh, fault and fix number one as well of getting that that divot in front of the golf ball. That's yeah. certainly a great reference that they can use. That's a, a, another way to use feedback, right? Yeah. To when, when you're training, get someone to film it. Or you can even use stuff like shadow drills or whatever you want to use to try and help you just kind of check that point there. So if you're someone who, you know, who is hitting the ball fat, you'll find a lot of pressure on that trail side. Mm -hmm. And you've got to realize why is there pressure on that trail side before it could be concept. You know, thing number two that we spoke about just then is that we're shifting too much mass. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you are balanced too far over there, you ain't getting back, yeah, no yeah. matter who you are. You just physically can't. If, if I'm playing any physical sport and I want to jump off that right side, I can't get there. Yeah, it's simply just too far. Yeah. All right, so we're layering these really nicely. So number one was concept. Number two was shifting too far off, which generally for the amateur, we're going to see that they hang back. And number three is more of an in-swing check. So make sure you go through those first two guys before you move on to this last one. Uh, and the last one is about the arm structure, isn't it, Tobes? As we're swinging this club back, we see a lot of amateur golfers, they get very narrow with their arms, mainly yeah. because they might not be turning or the sequence in which yeah. they swing and they just pull this thing back really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets narrow and the arms kind of fold up. So yeah. what I want you to talk to us about is like, how do we then have a reference for what the professional does and maybe like a, a real simple drill to ensure we've got enough width in the back swing, so assuming we're staying yeah. centered here, so we can then get that beautiful, what we see, wide to narrow golf swing yeah. with the professional golfer. Kind of talk us through that for us. Yeah, yeah. So I guess what you're talking about there, right, is someone whose arms are collapsing, right, in, in, the, in the back swing. Mm -hmm. And what also happens as well is that we see like too much of that trail arm, I guess we call, call use the term retraction here. Yeah, big time. And then when that does that right, there's a lack of stability. Yep. And there's a lack of um, being able to deliver that. You think about if you're holding something like this here, there's not a whole lot of strength there. Yep. So for me, one of the biggest ones that I'll use again is a, another valuable kind of feedback checkpoint for people is where to position their hands at lead arm parallel to the ground in the backswing. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. And yeah. we would use a, a down the line reference for this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if you take your backswing now, so yes, yeah, so if you go to a lead arm parallel to the ground, which at times can be challenging, right? People often will try to check this and go too far. Mm. What, what, what we'll often see, right, and this is one of the things that surprised me the most when I started studying golf swings, was particularly that lead arm there, how much it wasn't there. Yeah, correct. Because I think the term connection yeah. causes a lot of issues. So this um, glove here, the glove hand, pretty much in line with the buttons on your shirt or within the uh, the left pec area here. Mm -hmm. And you'll feel a little bit of space there. Yeah. And, and But basically, if you can get this shaft going through that shoulder, have those hands 
right there in between the buttons and the left pec, yeah. that means that the club has stayed in front of our body. People probably heard that term before Correct. and and not have it here or here. And if you're there, then you can stay connected and move into the golf ball that way. Yeah, let's just talk about that term connected. Connected yeah. is not swinging this golf club back like T-Rex arms as you're trying to keep it, that mm. talent in the arms like you see some players. Yeah. Do. Essentially, it's ensuring that the club, the arms and the body are working in unison. What we would like to see with the majority of golfers is a big body turn and a short arm swing with all the videos that I've done with all the high performing mm. coaches. That is a commonality that we see. And that reference point that Tobes just gave us of seeing the hands in front of the chest by the time that the lead arm is parallel puts us in a perfect position to then deliver that golf club. Because if we don't do that, Tobes, yeah. and we pull this thing back, and you can see from the down the line how round that looks, well then all of a sudden, we even created any hinge or load on the shaft and then as I begin to swing down, because we haven't created any angle, yeah. there's nothing to actually ensure that this low point can get forward and we deliver that nice lag and that release into the golf ball. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff you could go into there around low point swing direction mm -hmm. and inability to kind of use the way that these levers are built to be kind of used, right, instead of this way. Mm -hmm. And um, that can lead to a lot of inconsistency. But, but keeping those arms more we use the term in front of our body, which you say straight away is yeah. promoting nice turn as well. Correct. And there is a lot of checkpoints around where we want the body in that position there. Mm -hmm. But that's a, a really good simple way for people to check. So yeah. if you can achieve that, and for me, that's if you're feeling like this could be your problem, is doing that type of training to lead arm parallel to the ground, get your eight iron so you've got a little bit of loft on it, mm. and hit some shots. I, I like to use 70%, 60% speeds, and check it on the camera. Make sure that you're finding yourself in that right position. Yeah. And if you're getting a good result from it, just really gradually like smash that skill in as much as you can mm. before you start incorporating speed. Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? Uh, well, absolutely. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, Tobes, we're gonna combine all those three together, right? So the first one was just that we've got the concept and idea that we need the low point in front. Yeah. The second is I'm gonna make this slow rehearsal that you were talking about, keeping my lead ear over the top of the ball. Number three, yeah. hands in front of the chest from the down the line. I like this little exercise, just pumping the arms a couple of times so you can see that those hands are in front. And lastly on that, you'd agree you're not too tight there, right? Oh, definitely not too tight yeah. tense because as soon as I do that, I'm yeah. gonna lose that lag. Because so, we want things to hinge, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when I'm in the address position, I am centered pivot concept in front, hands in front, little practice swing in nice. front, brushing the ground. That felt great. All right, let's blend See it what all you got. together. Hey, you're on fire today, brother. I know, That's second nice. shot of the day. <laughs> Thanks, man.